Hi, and welcome to another episode of DAF, the Dumb Apple Farmer Talks. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about why the hell we even try to grow fruit out here in the Midwest, the upper Midwest in Iowa. I want to show you a little bit today about what happens when you get really cold temperatures in the winter, and this is the killer. Okay, so, uh, and, and when I talk about winter, there's really two well, actually, there's three key times that we got to worry about. The first is, what are the temperatures like going into winter? So the tree has got to shut down, take all the reserves that it had, and stick them down in the ground where they're safe, right? It puts them in the bank. The second period is during the dead of winter, right? Does it get so incredibly cold and dry that it just literally freeze dries the, the cambium tissue of the, of the plant? And the third time, and really probably one of the most critical times, is that time when you're starting to get warm up, but it's also cold. So you get warm up enough that sap starts to flow up the tree, you're pulling reserves out of the bank, and then it gets cold enough at night to just burst open any liquid that's come up the tree. All three are critical times. Now this orchard was planted about in the, in the early part of the 80s. So it's getting on, you know, 35 years old and the useful life of it is probably in the 40 year range. So we're not far off from it, but this is a variety called Jonathan. You know, it's a, one of America's true great heirloom varieties. Uh, you don't see them much in supermarkets anymore, but it's a great eating apple. Uh, fresh off the tree, it's damn near impossible to beat a Jonathan. Makes great applesauce makes great cider, hard or sweet. Uh, it's just a really good variety. But it doesn't do super well with super cold temperatures. One of the problems of this tree is that the rootstock it's grafted onto is called M7, all right, Molling 7. Molling 7 is a very vigorous growing tree and it sucks for winter hardiness, okay? It's got a thin bark and like many thin-skinned people that we know, it's very responsive, you know? Gets a little hot, boom it's gonna send out the sap. Gets a little cold, boom, it freezes real easily. So M7 as a variety, as a, as a rootstock, is just really susceptible to winter injury. And unfortunately, the orchard we have, uh, the older trees of, are pretty much all on M7 or M7A or M7, three different variants of the same beast. So as we see here, we had, uh, some damn cold temperatures this winter, all right? We had, first of all, again, we had these three stages of potential problems. The first stage we had was in the early part of November, the temperature dropped like a rock. And that's what happens in this part of the world, you know? The temperature goes up, the temperature comes down. <coughs> um, and the temperature in November dropped really quickly while most of the leaves were still on the tree and that causes damage. I mean, it does cause damage internal into the tree and that's a, that was a shock. And then in the winter, we had three nights where it got well below 20 below. One, one night was 27 below zero and that's an additional stress on the tree. We did not have a lot of real stress coming out of winter into spring this year. So, but we had two out of three and it looks like it's just kind of taken this tree, which was already struggling probably, uh, and it's kind of taken it off the, uh, out, of the, out of the picture. So you can see the leaves here are very, very small. They've, they're green, but they've got lots of problems on the edges of the leaves, not a good sign. Um, you can see other branches like this one. Anybody that watched last week knows about Fire blight, this is, looks a lot like fire blight because the same thing has happened. All the pathways for nutrients and going to and fro are dead. So this, this, this branch is toast. This whole branch here will be toast. And by the end of the year, this tree will be toast. So as we can see, this branch has basically died off back to here and you'll be able to see that dead tissue there. That, that should be nice and green. And you can see just a tad of green, but it's mostly brown. So we get down here into, into the green area, you'll see a nice bright green, no significant amount of brown whatsoever. 
this is still good up to here. But I guarantee you, by next year, this will all be brown. It'll all be looking shitty. Check here. That's still fairly green. Here we go. So this, you can start to see the beginning of the end here. 